Well, after months of preparation, design, and fabrication, it's finally time to show off the GameCube LED rings and show you guys exactly how it can up your controller project to the next level. Before we get started, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this episode. PCBWay does PCB manufacturing and PCB assembly services. Whether you have a small order that's just a few boards, or major scale manufacturing, PCBWay can help you. PCBWay helped me create these LED rings, and without their help, I'm not sure I would have been able to bring it to market so quickly. If you're interested in finding out more about PCBWay, check the link in the description below. Once again, I want to thank PCBWay for their help with the LED rings and sponsoring this episode. So the controller we will be modding with these LED rings is an awesome controller painted by my buddy Pucho Magic. This guy absolutely kills it, and this controller is no exception. So the first step as always is to get your tri-wing screwdriver and let's rip this thing open. So with the controller fully disassembled, the first thing I recommend is just doing some general maintenance and cleaning. It's always good to make sure that you're starting with a clean surface, and as long as we're in the controller, now would be the most appropriate time to do it. What I like to do is use a little bit of IPA and a toothbrush to go ahead and clean up the stick box. This means cleaning within the stick box, getting any of the gunk that might be in there out, and cleaning up the actual PCB itself. This will help you start, like I said, with a very clean surface and make it easier to work with as we go through the modding process. With the PCB all clean, it's time to take a look at the actual LED ring kit itself. What you'll notice is, is it comes with a couple different things. Obviously it comes with the two LED rings, one for the thumbstick and the other for the C-stick, but it also includes some magnet wire as well and ships in an anti-static bag. Using magnet wire for this particular mod made the most sense as it'll require zero cutting of the shell later on in the process. The other thing to kind of point out here as we take a look at these LED rings is how thin they are. In totality, they're less than one millimeter thick, and they're designed to work with the original thumbsticks, as well as the ones from China, but we'll get into that in a little bit more detail later on. Overall, installation is really fast for these LED rings, so let's get into it. First step is we're going to start with our main left thumbstick, and we're going to go ahead and clip the little nub sitting up just to the right of the stick, flush with the board. This will allow for the LED ring to sit flush on top of the board, which is exactly what we want. When looking at how to position your LED ring, I recommend keeping the two solder pads at the two o'clock position. This will help when we solder it to the actual power and ground on the board. With the LED ring positioned correctly, next we're gonna turn our attention to a little bit of prep, and we're gonna prep the magnet wire for soldering to the controller PCB. Now, for those who aren't aware what magnet wire is, think of it as a thin piece of wire that is coated with enamel paint. So what you need to do is burn off the enamel paint prior to being able to solder the wire and create a joint. So to do that, what I like to do is keep the wire, the tip of the wire, on my soldering iron and then introduce a little bit of fresh solder. You'll know you've done it right when the magnet wire goes from red to silver. With the wire all prepped, the next thing for us to do is solder it directly to the actual PCB itself. If you take a look at the attached picture, you can, you can see the exact positive and negative area that we need to solder. As with any time when you solder, make sure you use plenty of flux and good soldering technique. One other additional step I'd mention if you're not too familiar with magnet wire is it could be worth your time to, to get out your multimeter so you can test the continuity between the 3.3 volts and ground from the LED ring and the actual PCB itself. But anyway, let's rip through this soldering and make it look really pretty. So the last thing I'm going to do 
is fasten the LED ring to the PCB using a little bit of hot glue. And while I probably don't recommend what I'm doing, I ask that the solder gods forgive me as I use my soldering iron tip to melt the hot glue. With the left thumbstick done, we're going to turn our attention over to the C-stick, and we're going to basically rinse and repeat the process. The nice thing is on the, th on the C-stick, there's going to be nothing that we need to cut or do any prep. The LED ring will already sit flush onto the PCB, and we're going to want to orientate the solder pads at the somewhere between somewhere between the 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock position. Next we'll solder the magnet wire to the LED ring and the pads on there, and we're going to want to use the same technique discussed earlier. Finally, we'll want to flip over the C-stick board, and we're going to want to solder to pins 1 and pins 3. Now the beauty of this is it's already labeled by Nintendo, and it makes it very easy to know exactly where everything needs to go. Pin 1 is your 3.3 volts, and pin 3 is ground. With all the soldering out of the way, the only thing left to do is adhere the LED ring to the actual PCB, and I use a little bit of hot glue to do this, similar to as before. Now the one thing I recommend you do prior to doing this is push the LED ring as far to the 12 o'clock position as possible, and you can kind of see I've done that there. Um, and the reason why is because there's a little tab on the back of the controller shell, and you want to make sure that you're not getting your LED ring in the way of that tab. The last thing I want to make mention of is if you're using the Chinese sticks, there's actually a design flaw in these sticks and basically the hole that the thumbstick itself actually sits in is too deep and what will end up happening is you get rubbing of the thumbstick on the shell. Now to alleviate that problem what I'd recommend you do is fill the bottom of the thumbstick with, with something. Um, typically I'd recommend small balls of like rolled up tin foil work really well. Um, for me, I've got tons of like random pieces of shielding of wire or little dabs of hot glue all over the place, so that's actually what I use, but uh, tin foil works really well. Now you might be thinking that the mod is over, but uh, what do you think, Bluto? Is it, is it over? Over? Did you say over? Nothing is over until we decide it is! Yeah, good call, buddy. It's not over yet. This shell that Pucho did is way too sweet, and LED rings are just the beginning. Let's cast some sweet buttons that are going to match the aesthetic of this thing really nicely. So I decided to mix up some nice green to go ahead and match the shell that Pucho did, and I'm really excited about this particular green because it's got a semi-translucent property to it, as well as it has a very, very nice UV reactiveness. So anytime this thing comes under black light, it's going to fluoresce and it's going to look absolutely awesome. Six and a half hours later. One other thing I casted but didn't show here was the plug. Because let's be honest, might as well do that too. It's going to look absolutely awesome in a translucent green. With all the casting done, only thing left to do now is reassemble the controller, drop those casted buttons in, and let's admire our work. Overall, this controller turned out absolutely awesome, and those LED rings look absolutely fantastic. I'm really excited about these, and I'm thrilled that I've finally been able to get them out. Like I said, I spent a lot of time designing, 
prototyping and making sure that there's something that I would be absolutely thrilled to release for everybody. So like I said, if you're interested in them, feel free to check them out on my Etsy page. Currently, white's the only color available. While more colors may come out in the future, I figured white was a good option as it was more universal in nature. Here's a couple other examples of LED rings on other colored sticks. With that being said, I want to thank Pucho for doing some awesome paint work on this controller. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out some of my other GameCube controller mods that I've done in the past. I've done a whole bunch and I linked a couple that I think you're going to be particularly interested in at the cards at the end of the video. With all that being said guys, I want to thank you very much for watching, hope you liked the video, and if so, please drop me a like, a comment, and a subscribe. Catch you guys for the next one here soon.